what I'll show today is how to find the speed of sound and air by pairing frequencies from a tuning fork with the length of the column of air that re reproduces a resonant tone. And so this is actually kind of a follow-up of an earlier video. This is the video that I had before. Uh, it shows just a tuning fork vibrating with a column of air that we have here. And so the length that we're measuring is from the top of the cylinder to where the water cuts off the air column there. I had my students do this as a lab, and they came up with the following results using a variety of tuning forks. So this is their chart that they had. Uh, the links here that we have are actually in meters and uh, frequency in hertz, so this should actually be labeled as meters here. Whenever we put this information into a graphing calculator, we were looking at how to understand the values in order to find the speed of sound. The formula that dictates this is our frequency is equal to n times v over 4L, where n is an odd number. So this works for closed-end resonators. And so what we realized was that for the most part, we're going to let n be 1. So that was the um, number that corresponded with the certain frequencies that we had. Our v value is the speed of sound, so I just pulled that out front. And so the reason that I wrote it this way is we're going to try to compare this with a graph that we produce. So we will have our frequencies as a value, and our um, x-axis will be 1 over 4L. And so this will be similar to an equation of a line of a y value equals a slope times an x value plus b. You'll notice that in our equation, our b value should actually be 0. And so it's actually a direct variation problem where y equals kx, where k is going to be our slope. So what we'll notice, though, is, is on our graph, the slope of our line should actually give us the speed of sound in air. This is what we had whenever we entered it into our Inspire calculators. I entered our length values. I called it L. Our frequency values called it F. We didn't want to graph these two next to each other, so we created an extra column. The extra column that we did I just called over, so it was 1 over 4 times L. Um, this is where in your Inspire calculator you can enter an equation which will fill out the values, kind of like what you would have in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the L that I have here actually asked me if I wanted the column called L or the variable that I had labeled L, so I chose the variable reference. Whenever we graphed it, we kind of got some weird results. We were expecting a linear relationship, and it actually looks like here that we have a linear relationship that exists here, and perhaps a different linear relationship that exists here. So when we viewed this, we looked back at our equation. We said, well, for our equation, for our frequencies, we had n times v over 4L, and we chose n to be 1. Looking at these three data points, they clearly don't belong in the same graph the same way that these others do. So what we did was we chose instead of n equals 1, we let n equals 3 for these three values. So that would be uh, 3 over 4L. And so once we adjusted that, the graph that we ended up getting looked like this. So we have quite a linear relationship going on here. So our graph of best fit line will just come right through here. And we're actually able to use our Inspire calculator to do regression on it. And so the regression line that we came up with was 321.646x plus 15.7. And if you remember, we said that our slope is going to be the velocity of uh, sound and air. So we found that our speed of sound and air is about 322 meters per second. And that's a pretty good result compared to the actual velocity. The accepted velocity is 340 meters per second. One thing that we noticed, though, is that our y-intercept was not zero. It was at 15.7. And unfortunately, in the Inspire, you cannot uh, force the zero to be uh, at the uh, origin. So what I did was I went over to Excel, and Excel actually has a very nice feature that it has where once you enter your values and select the trend line, you can actually set the intercept the y-intercept to be whatever you want. So if you force the y-intercept here to be zero on this, uh, it'll actually give us a direct variation 
format. And you'll notice that the slope of this is actually 335.61. So with this information, in forcing a direct variation, we have the speed of sound to be 336 meters per second, which is compared to the accepted value of 340 meters per second. And that produced actually a very small 1.2% Error. So um, students did a great job collecting, uh, meticulously collecting the data, and then the analysis of this shows that the speed of sound in my room was roughly 336 meters per second.